Okay, so in this example, we have a little four bar mechanism, and we're told that link OA rotates clock, uh, excuse me, in this case counterclockwise with a given angular speed. And get based on this information, as well as the fact that link OA is horizontal, link AB is vertical, and theta is a prescribed angle at this instant, we're asked to determine the instant center of link AB, and also to use that location to determine the angular velocities of link AB and B, excuse me, DB respectively. Okay, so in these problems where we use instantaneous centers, much like in the problems uh, that we've considered thus far where we use vector analysis, we typically want to move from where we know the most towards where we know the least. In this case, we know the angular velocity of bar OA is counterclockwise, and so I know, based on the fact that the velocity has to be perpendicular to the line connecting points O and A, that the velocity of point A has to be going, and I'll try to construct this in a different color than black, in this case, something straight up like so, and so this will be the velocity of point A. Now, if I use somewhat similar logic, we know that the velocity of point B has to be perpendicular to the line connecting uh, points B and D. And so in this case, I know that the velocity of point B has to be somewhere along the line, uh, which is perpendicular to line BD here. So the velocity has to be somewhere along this line I've indicated. Now, based on that information, for link AB, I now know the velocity of one point identically, namely point A, and I know the direction of velocity of a second point on that, namely point B. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw construction lines which are perpendicular to both of those. And so if I draw a line which is perpendicular to the velocity of point A, I get this one right here. And if I draw a line that's perpendicular to uh, the velocity of point B, I'm going to get an intersection right here, right back at point D. And so point D is not only going to be point D, but point D is also going to be the instantaneous center of link AB. Now, given that information, I can actually start to do some very useful things. So, for example, uh, if I note in this case uh, that I know the angle theta and I have a numerical value for L, I can compute the length of this line segment right here, AB, and let's just call that B, the distance B. So, namely, what I can say here is that I have the opposite and the adjacent angle, so I can say that the tangent of the angle theta is going to equal the opposite side B divided by the adjacent side, which is L, and I can recover from this B. Namely, I know B is going to equal L times the tangent of the angle theta. Now, why is that useful? Well, if I want to find the angular velocity now of link AB, I know that that's going to have to equal the velocity of a known point, or more accurately, the speed of a known point, VA, divided by the distance between the points where I know the velocity, namely A, and the point where it is the instant center of that bar, namely point D. And so I can divide this by length B. And so if I go ahead and do a little bit of math here, I know that VA, the speed VA, is going to equal L times omega OA, and I need to divide that by B. Now once I have that information, I can go one step further and say that I know, because A is moving upward, that link AB is going to actually rotate in a clockwise sense around point D. This means that the angular velocity, omega AB, is simply going to be L omega naught A divided by B in the minus K direction. Minus, of course, coming from the fact we're rotating clockwise. So that'll give me one of my answers. Now, in addition, I can use the fact that I know the angular speed omega AB and the fact that the instantaneous center for that bar is at D to say then, well, the velocity of point B has to be moving, in this case, up and to the left. If I know that that is moving up and to the left, I can find the velocity of point B, namely the velocity of point B has to equal, in this case, omega AB, the angular speed of that arm, times, in this case, the distance, and actually I should write this as a speed, the speed VB is going to equal omega AB times the distance between points B and D, which in this case will be simply the square root of B squared plus L squared. Once I have that information, I can go ahead and divide through by that length to find omega of BD, and so in this case I'll have that omega BD is equal to VB divided by the length from B to D, which is, of course, the square root of B squared plus L squared, which tells me that omega BD is simply going to equal omega AB. And so I can go ahead and work this out here, and then I'll get simply that omega BD is going to equal omega AB, 
which will equal minus L omega naught A divided by B in the K direction. And that should wrap us up. Best of luck.